Are Tea Party groups across the nation getting the shakedown from the IRS? Tonight, we are looking at whether or not there is a political motivation as to why the IRS is now suddenly asking for the names of everyone in those groups, the names of their spouses, and even wants to look at their Facebook pages. Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, it's a very strange request from the IRS, and the timing even more strange. Let's talk about the backstory here. Tea Party groups across the nation applied throughout 2010 for 501c4 status. Now, this is a tax exempt status from the IRS that allows the groups to not be taxed on any profit they might make at events. For instance, if they sell a t-shirt, make a couple bucks profit. 501c4s are allowed to take donations, but those donations are not tax exempt. Again, hundreds of requests were made from groups across the nation in 2010, but it was not until the end of January of this year that these groups heard back from the IRS. They all did within just a matter of days of each other. Hundreds of Tea Party groups in seven states. The letter to each group from the IRS stating basically the same thing. We need more information before we can complete our consideration of your application. Now, granted, the IRS must do its due diligence by looking into any group applying for 501c4 status. But now we get to the questions and information the IRS is asking for these groups to provide. For instance, have you added or replaced any board members since 2010? Include a resume for each. List each past or present board member, officer, or key employee, and members of their families who have served on the board of another organization. Does your organization promote or publicize yourself using an internet social media such as Facebook? Please list the social media outlets and provide hard copy printouts of all the pages. And it goes on from there. The kicker, after taking over 18 months to respond to these Tea Party groups, the IRS gave these hundreds of groups two weeks to provide all that information. Jack Painter is with the Ohio Liberty Council. It appears they want to know everything about what the organization is doing, which seems to be fair, but they, they also uh, are asking for it in an unusual way. They want us to print out the, fa the pages from the, our websites and Facebook and fax them to the IRS, as voluminous as that might be. And they want uh, all the pages, apparently. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's what they've requested. Painter says the Ohio Liberty Council sent a letter back to the IRS that they're not going to comply and therefore withdrawing their application for 501c4 status. But Painter and the OLC have a lot of questions about what is really going on here. What's in effect happening is that the IRS is trying to audit us before granting us tax exempt status. In the past, that's not been the case. And as far as we know, this has never happened with groups on the left. What we'd like to know is whether the IRS has made similar requests of groups on the left. And, and we'd like to actually see copies of the, the requests they've made. And then there is this letter, one that was signed by seven Democratic senators, and it's dated at the same time these hundreds of letters went out from the IRS. It calls on the IRS commissioner, Douglas Shulman, to look into whether social welfare organizations, which are requesting 501c4 status, are actually engaged in political campaign activities. A painter points out rightly that 501c4s, which include labor unions, are allowed to contribute to political causes so long as it is not the primary function of the organization. It's my understanding that lots of organizations have that status, including union organizations. I'm not aware of any effort by the IRS to dig into the, all the relationships of the union organizations the way they're trying to do it for the Tea Party. So here's what you need to know. Why is the IRS giving these groups trouble? Well, really, I don't know, especially since Kentucky and Ohio groups have already told the IRS they simply will continue on without this status because they don't really need it. So if the goal was to shut down these groups, this whole thing seems highly ineffective. If the goal is simply to intimidate Tea Party groups during an election year and there is an effort to use the IRS to do that, well, that's a big problem. Richard Nixon used the IRS to go after his enemies. Let's hope we're not seeing a repeat of that and that the IRS does come clean about all the other groups that it's making the same demands of. And that is Reality Check.